one reason class you might when we were thinking about the introduction one reason you were thinking about buyer's remorse is oftentimes people sometimes don't discuss things they make rash decisions or quick decisions or spontaneous decisions the deliberative process or the act of deliberating is really a key part of what congress does and because congress is our lawmaking body and these laws affect millions of people uh, both internationally and domestically it's really important that they get it right and one of the ways they do that is by talking so the deliberative process is a key part to congress and i just want to explain what it is first it is the careful consideration and discussion of a bill a bill a bill is simply a proposed law it's not a law until it goes through the entire law making process um, but it is a proposed law, which is, you know, makes sense. That's what Congress is supposed to do, especially when we have this idea of popular sovereignty. The deliberative process is done by a variety of people. It's done by uh, various groups inside of Congress, which includes Congress members themselves, their staff, uh, advisors, but it also includes people outside of Congress. This could include interest groups, uh, research groups, think tanks that are bringing uh, studies to Congress to help them influence policy. It's done by the media, and it's also done by the general public, especially on really big laws when it comes to, you know, if it comes to tax breaks or education funding or uh, proposed uh, military budgets. And the idea of deliberative process is to consider an idea before it becomes law. It slows the lawmaking process down and also test the bill support. So through discussion and also research, uh, which is also part of the deliberative process and investigation and uh, trying to figure out how much a bill will cost, all part of that is part of the deliberative process, we really get the best laws. The dangers, however, of not doing this is that we could actually have bad laws. So, um, you know, we want to make sure that it's an important step to make sure that only the really good bills become laws. And in fact, 95% uh, of proposed laws never happen. And that's because they're bad ideas. We wouldn't know they're bad ideas unless we discussed it. Uh, these discussions also encourage broad support. It's obviously democratic in nature. It's democratic to debate with one another and get multiple viewpoints. But the big danger is that speedy decisions is really the hallmark of tyrants and dictatorships, right? I mean, that's one advantage of dictatorships is that they can make speedy decisions. The problem is, as probably in your own life, speedy decisions tend to have dire consequences. And we're going to talk about one of those uh, in a minute. So here's a Freire diagram of the deliberative process. Take a look at it, and please, uh, if you haven't already in the note-taking guide, um, come up with your own examples. Right? So if you haven't noticed that, there is a note-taking guide here that you can click on. So what about without the deliberative process? This is a, this picture here is just a, it's a monument uh, right around the corner from the Vietnam War Memorial in Washington, D.C. And essentially the Vietnam War uh, is one big example of what happens when the deli when deliberative process does not happen. So I want to give you the background. In August 4th, 1964, the USS Maddox, which was a naval ship, was operating in the Gulf of Tonkin. Uh, like you can see where the Gulf of Tonkin is in Vietnam. And they were doing reconnaissance on North Vietnamese uh, naval installations. The day before, uh, they had also been in this area and actually had gotten into a conflict with, with um, torpedo boats. Those were successfully neutralized. Um, but the next day, they were in international waters, or at least so they claimed. And they were really there to try and help some of the covert operations that were occurring in Vietnam at the time. The U.S. at the time had been involved in Vietnam um, really as early as 1945. And combat operations were occurring as early as 1954. And it really escalated under JFK. Uh, it wasn't a full-fledged war. It was 
much more covert or much more secretive, even though there was 15,000 troops there at the time. Um, but they were technically, quote-unquote, advisors. In reality, they were actually engaged in combat, but it, it was a little bit more secretive. Um, however, the next day, the USS Maddox apparently was attacked by torpedo boats. There was an explosion. Um, and according to the Maddox, they had said that they were in international waters. Well, very quickly, President Johnson orders the attacks the very next day, on August 5th. And he immediately brings a resolution to Congress that will soon be known as the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution. And he brings this to Congress, more or less looking for authorization of force. Um, at this time, Johnson, uh, there was a large-scale discussion on whether uh, we should have been in Vietnam. There's a discussion whether JFK was escalating Vietnam or was going to draw it down. There's a huge just debate on that. We don't have time for that. If you want to look into that, I'd be happy to give you some resources. Uh, but essentially, Johnson said that we've been attacked in international waters. This gives us the right to go into Vietnam uh, with a full-scale military operation. Five days later, afterwards, keep this in mind, on August 10th, Congress authorizes escalation of the Vietnam War. The House at the time, the House of Representatives votes 416 to 0 to authorize force, and the Senate uh, authorized, goes 98 to 2. Only two people said no, and one of those was Senator Morse. And he was concerned that we were making a grave mistake and rushing headlong into war. I also heard a senator from Illinois even recently saying that the, the fervor when the war drum begins uh, is very hard to slow down. And that was the case for them even in the last Iraq war. So when we're considering military action and the, dang and the dangers and consequences it's going to have both on uh, the world and on our country, it's worth debating, right? But in this instance, we only um, had five days to find out what happened. And this is before the internet, before, you know, records could be exchanged rather quickly or before we could get the full story and investigate people um, and, and even travel in some ways. So what we came to find out was that the Maddox, after all, did not know what happened. Um, President Johnson said a couple days even later, we could have been shot up by whales for all I know. Uh, however, even though the Maddox had sent reports saying that eh, they weren't really sure what happened, Johnson went ahead and Congress went ahead and authorized force. So I have a brief little explanation of the Gulf of Tonkin a little bit more in terms of the military strategy here. If you want to take a look at that, I would encourage you to do so. It is part of the lesson, so make sure you do that. Um, so what are the outcomes of that? We went into war on a farce. We don't know if we were truly attacked in international waters. Um, uh, all data seems to indicate that we weren't. And so what that means, however, is ultimately because of not talking through things, we got buyer's remorse. Over 56,000 Americans died on top of the 300,000 casualties. This includes people that were wounded or people that were captured um, and all the physical trauma that comes with that, you know, of uh, losing your leg or, uh, you know, John McCain had recently passed and a lot of, the, of their discussions around John McCain was a senator from Arizona, just so you guys know, and a former presidential candidate. And there was a lot of discussion of what he had to endure in a prisoner of war camp. Um, all because someone uh, or our country at the time did not take the time to actively research and actively discuss whether this was a good idea. It's, it's uh, certainly could have been at the time. Um, you know, that's a historical argument too. But... There's no denying that we didn't spend enough time talking about it. Two million Vietnamese uh, citizens and soldiers were also killed. And it led to some one of the most divisive periods at home. There was questions on who was serving. Uh, there was questions on what our role in the world should be, whether the war was moral. Um, 
the 1960s were one of the most divisive periods in, in the United States history, arguably even more divisive than today. And the Vietnam War was a huge part of that. It also broadly increased presidential powers. Now the president had authority to use large-scale military force without a declaration of war, which was the sole responsibility of Congress. Now, Congress did authorize war, um, but they took away some of that. They lost some of their power to hold the military and the president accountable when they gave him vast power to authorized force. Uh, so much so that in, in 1973, they passed the War Powers Resolution Act, which limited the president and said that he had to report to them within 48 hours of the use of force. Uh, Nixon at the time actually tried to veto it. So it shows that even uh, through this action, that the president uh, puts more conflict between the president and Congress and creates dysfunction in government. All because we didn't talk about something. So where in your life do you think you could benefit to have a little bit more of a discussion about something? Where have you made rash decisions and maybe reflecting, think about where could I have uh, discussed that with someone before I made that decision? I know for me personally, sometimes it's, it could be buying, you know, making large scale purchases. A couple key points of this lesson that you should or need to know um, is number one, the deliberative process involves debating law bills, researching and considering possible bills and actions. The Gulf of Tonkin incident occurred in 1964 and it highlights why discussion and slow action is sometimes needed. And Thirdly, Congress's primary, responsibi primary responsibility is to make laws. This can't be done, however, unless there is an active discussion of the possible consequences of what will occur from a law. 